Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to compare the Ledger Nano X to the Trezor T model cryptocurrency hardware wallet so you can make the best decision over which hardware wallet is best for you. So let's get started. Hey guys, Crypto Dad here, and I've been running this YouTube channel for well over six years now. And during that time, I have reviewed a lot of different cryptocurrency wallets, soft wallets, hot wallets, cold wallets, hardware wallets. So I have a lot of reviews over the years. And one of the biggest questions I get is what is the best cryptocurrency wallet? Well, unfortunately, there is no straight answer for that question. Every wallet has its pros and cons, and all I can do for you is give you the information that you need to make an intelligent decision. I'm not just going to tell you which wallet to buy, although a lot of people would like that. I'm not about that. So let's go over the difference between the Ledger Nano X hardware wallet and the Trezor T hardware wallet. Now, before we get too deep into this comparison, I'll let you know that I have done a lot of videos on how to set up both of these products. I'll put links to those up in the corner there and in the description below. So if you're looking for setup tutorials, recover tutorials, management of crypto asset tutorials, I've got them for you. But I wanted to give you an overview of the difference between these two wallets. These two wallets are basically the flagship products of these two companies. So if you're looking for the best that both of these companies have to offer, I'm going to give you a breakdown of what you can expect from both of these wallets. So the first thing I'll point out is that the Ledger Nano X hardware wallet is $149. And the Trezor T, which is the flagship product of the Trezor line, is $219. So right away, we can see that the Ledger Nano X is more affordable. So that may be something that's paramount to you in your decision as to whether or not you're going to buy a cryptocurrency wallet is price. I will also put out there that if you're managing uh, thousands of dollars of crypto, uh, it really shouldn't matter to you how much your wallet costs when you get right down to it. Uh, if you're protecting five to $10,000 of crypto or more, then a couple hundred dollars really shouldn't be a, a consideration when trying to decide which wallet is right for you. But I will put that out there that there is a price difference between these two flagship models. Now, another thing to consider is how easy is the wallet to use? Now, both of these wallets do require a bit of a learning curve, as do most crypto wallets. There are some easier to use crypto solutions out there, like the Tangem wallet or even the Ballet wallet, which are very easy to use and set up, but have their own set of considerations. So as far as being easy to use, both the Ledger Nano X and the Trezor T are a little bit complicated to set up and use. You have to go through the process of initializing the wallet and writing down a backup phrase. And that can be tedious for a lot of people that aren't familiar with how crypto wallets work. So that is a consideration for both of these as far as setup and configuration. But as far as day-to-day -day use goes, the Ledger Nano X is pretty easy to use. It has those two nice buttons on the front. Now the Trezor Model T has this wonderful touch screen on it and it is a joy to use. So the extra money is really worth it when it comes down to the interface of the device itself. So you might want to think about that when you're considering whether to buy one or the other of these products. Now, another thing that I'll point out as far as usability goes, 
let's take a look at the software packages that you will use as your go-to management software. Now, Ledger Live is the software that you use to manage a Ledger device. And over the years, it has evolved quite a bit. It's very useful and versatile. As you can see, uh, I can get a quick overview of my assets and their real world value. Uh, I have an interface where I can manage each of my wallets from within Ledger Live. And notice that Ledger Live supports quite a few different cryptocurrencies. So when it comes to usability and versatility, Ledger Live is a great application. By comparison, the Trezor software is called Trezor Suite. It's also pretty intuitive and easy to use like Ledger Live. The drawback to the Trezor device, however, is that it doesn't support as many cryptocurrencies uh, as the Ledger device and the Ledger Live software. So if I want to add additional cryptocurrencies, You'll notice that there's a limited amount of cryptocurrencies that are natively supported in the Trezor Suite application. If we go back over here to Ledger Live, you'll see that uh, Ledger Live supports Stellar, Cosmos, Polkadot, Algorand, uh, quite a few different cryptocurrencies that are not supported by the Trezor suite and the Trezor device. So if you're looking to manage a lot of different cryptocurrencies, then the Ledger platform is probably a better solution for you. Now, uh, if all you want to manage is Bitcoin and Ethereum, then uh, really the Trezor wins as far as that goes, right? Because it's got a uh, easy to use an intuitive interface for the top cryptocurrencies. If all you want to buy and hold is Bitcoin or Ethereum and and or ERC20 tokens, then uh, Trezor Suite is more than adequate for that. I should also point out that you can use both of these devices with several third-party wallets. And one of the most versatile wallets out there is MetaMask. So you can set up MetaMask on your computer and connect your hardware devices uh, and manage the crypto that's stored on your devices. So if you'll notice here, they have this hardware wallet option and it supports Ledger and Trezor. But there are also quite a few third-party wallets out there that only support the Ledger device. And that is because the Ledger device over the years is one of the top cryptocurrency wallets. And it has a lot of developer support. So let's quickly take a look at software and open source options. So if we go to the GitHub repository of Ledger, you'll see that there are quite a few APIs that Ledger Live supports. So there's a lot of developer activity uh, that use the Ledger API uh, for their cryptocurrencies. The uh, Ledger Live software is open source and uh, they have a lot of third-party developer support for their platform and that is why they support so many cryptos. But while we're on the subject of open source, let's take a look at the big difference between Trezor and Ledger, and that is open source. So Trezor is completely open source. The firmware, the suite is fully open source and transparent. So Trezor beats Ledger on that front. Now, as I mentioned, the Ledger Live software is fully open source, but not their firmware. But they are working towards uh, more transparency. They have released their white paper on their new recovery feature. And so uh, they are working towards being fully open source and transparent. But uh, at the present, uh, Trezor beats them on open source and transparency. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, I briefly mentioned it here, is the Ledger Recover Service. For many years, Ledger was considered one of the most secure wallets out there, but they recently introduced a service called Ledger Recover, 
which allows users to export their private keys to cloud backup. Now, there have been a lot of criticisms about Ledger over this service. It sort of flies in the face of what a self-custody hardware wallet is all about, and that is self-custody. A user should manage their own private keys. They shouldn't have to rely on a company to back up and store their private keys. However, over the years, through their support department, Ledger discovered that there were a lot of people who were unable or unwilling to manage their own private keys. And Ledger thought that this was an untapped market uh, for a lot of people out there that they would like to onboard into self-custody crypto. But a service that manages private keys for the user is a bit antithetical to the spirit of cryptocurrency self-custody. So Ledger has received a lot of flack over this new service. In addition to this, they did not really manage the rollout of this service. And there was a lot of confusion surrounding this service. And now there are a lot of people that simply don't trust Ledger as a company anymore they feel that their private keys are at risk when using Ledger devices. Personally, I don't think that the Ledger is any less secure than it was before they released this Ledger service, and I even trust their firmware updates uh, that enable this service. But a lot of people don't, and so overall, I'm going to have to reduce my security evaluation of the Ledger Nano X. So let's go ahead and wrap up this comparison with uh, the report card of both devices. So let's cover the Ledger Nano X. Security, I give it a B now. Uh, I used to give it an A, but the Ledger Recover fiasco and all of the uh, interaction that the Ledger had with their users about their firmware and uh, the ability to export private keys, I'm going to have to lower my security rating of the Ledger Nano X in general. Um, so it's going to get a B. Now for functionality, I still give it an A+. As I mentioned, the Ledger Live is very versatile, easy to use, and supports a lot of cryptos. And in addition to its Ledger Live software, there are a lot of third-party wallets out there that also support the Ledger device, uh, whereas not as many third-party wallets support the Trezor device. I don't really know why that is. Probably because there are more people out there using Ledger devices over the years, and so developers have tended to uh, support that device more than the Trezor. That might change here in the future. But as it stands now, functionality-wise, I still give the Ledger Nano X an A+. Ease of use, it gets a B. Uh, I'm not that crazy about the two buttons. Uh, it's a little wonky, a little difficult to use. There are a lot of better solutions out there, uh, touchscreen being one of them. So as far as the Ledger Nano X is concerned, ease of use gets a B. Uh, and that all ties in with the difficulty of uh, conf setting up and configuring the device as well, right? Now, affordability, it gets that C+. It, both the Ledger and Trezor are rather expensive uh, to uh, a brand new user, right? Uh, a couple hundred bucks is nothing to sneeze at. Ledger comes in at $150. So uh, affordability gets that C+. There are cheaper solutions out there, including free open source wallets that you can use. And on the subject of open source, Ledger Nano X gets a C for not being fully open source and transparent. All right, so let's go over to the Trezor T now. So Trezor T gets an A 
For me, I don't give it an A plus because there are more secure solutions out there like cold card and the Trezor T is not an air gap solution. There are more hardware wallets out there that are more secure than the Trezor T, although they do come with a cost of being a little more difficult to use than the Trezor T. But overall, I'm giving the Trezor T a security grade of A. Functionality gets a B plus. In my functionality total grade, I do include its versatility and its support for various cryptocurrencies. So that brings down its functionality rating in my book. But as I mentioned earlier, if all you're storing is Bitcoin and Ethereum, then the Trezor T uh, device and software are more than adequate for that. Ease of use gets a B plus. The Trezor T has that great touchscreen on there, but it is a little bit difficult for a newcomer to set up and configure. So that goes into its ease of use. Now, affordability, as we talked about in the beginning, it is rather expensive, $219 uh, for a person just getting into crypto. If you've only got a few hundred dollars that you can invest in crypto, you're probably better off using an exchange as you're getting started. But as you accumulate more cryptocurrency and you want to store it safely and securely, a couple hundred bucks is really not a huge price to pay to uh, store thousands of dollars of cryptocurrency. Open source Trezor T gets an A+. It is and has always been open source. It's one of the things that the company takes pride in. They even supply 3D printer information if you would actually like to build your own device. It's possible you can build your own Trezor device because the, the design is fully open source and transparent. So uh, Trezor T gets very high marks when it comes to open source. So I hope you found this comparison useful. Uh, as I mentioned, I can't just tell you which wallet to go out and buy, but I did want to give you all of the factors that come into play when choosing between the Ledger Nano X and the Trezor T. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post in the comment section down below. Let's open up a discussion and I'd be more than happy to follow up with you guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.